All right, so this is my third attempt at reviewing. I'm not actually sure whether reviewing is the right phrase, but look, the Karoo 2. There's been some major updates on this device. You've probably seen this across a number of different channels recently. So today I wanna to go through those three updates and how they play out on the bike. And I also wanna just quickly touch on whether I think this device is is there yet, and also if there are a couple more features coming down the pipeline. All right, let's talk about the Karoo 2 again. Standard YouTube disclaimer time. I don't even know why people bother doing this stuff. But anyway, I have no affiliation to Hammerhead Karoo 2. They have no partnership with the team, no potential partnership with the team. This is just my experience with this device. I purchased this six months ago, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. The first feature we have to talk about is the updates to the user interface. This is dramatic. Okay, so the way this plays out on the road that is really beneficial is you're in a standard bike computer scenario where you're using, you know, you're recording data, you've got your heart rate, you're doing your, your usual kind of things along and you want to change some settings. You want to check on some notifications. You want to change a profile. That is now far more achievable through a swipe down and a move through that user interface. The way I use this, and I love this, okay, is I might be just, I might put on a profile for the gravel bike, which will have directions, and have the map, and just some generic kind of fun stuff to look at, really, when it boils down to it. And I might have that on for an hour. Basically, it'll be my ride to where I might do my intervals. I get to where I want to do my intervals, and I will swipe into interval profile. Okay, and that is all predefined by me as my interval profile. It's like you're sort of clocking in for clocking in for work. Okay, you do your intervals, got you're all your stuff set out. There's no sort of fluffy things in there. There's no, uh, you know, like I don't know, maps. You're just business like, and then you finish your intervals and you swipe up. You're back into gravel land and you're chilled. Okay, so that sounds really nice. But in practical terms, what makes this a really nice feature and the way it's been done is there's no lagging, okay? And by that, I mean the swipe functionality, the interchanging through profiles is, it's smartphone-esque. And that was always, in that initial review that I did from this that did skip lots of details, you know, Chris does skip details, but I was talking more about the theory of this being a smartphone experience. So the first feature upgrade that has really taken this to the next level is the user interface experience. The second big feature is not particularly one feature, it's the way this is now approaching training. The lap feature now is very, very detailed. Your lap review feature is very detailed. So you get a lovely list of laps that you have done and you can scroll through your normalized powers, your, your heart rates, your average speeds, through all this kind of stuff. Being able to review this stuff in one neat place was always the one thing an SRM PCA did really well. That interval feature allowed you to review your intervals while you're out there on the bike. And the way they have now updated this is leaning much closer into the way SRM are doing that. The other thing they have added that does massively help its training sort of potential is the dashboard. So Obviously you can still upload to Strava and that kind of thing. Uh, no today's plan direct upload, there is a training peaks upload. But what Hammerhead have done is actually improved their own dashboard. And it's really actually now quite a valuable little training tool. If you don't want to go down the today's plan or the training peaks route, but you do want some more detail, you do want some more training detail than just the stuff that Strava will get you, give you, it's not a bad option. So for me, I legitimately think this is a useful training tool as of April 2022. It was not the case six months ago, but the additions to the data, the lap review, the dashboard have made this a useful training tool. Now the third feature, which I can find no literature, no data, no information on in any of the build updates. But as I sit here in front of you today, in April 2022, the screen is better. When I did my first review, it was my big gripe was in direct sunlight, 
it was really difficult to see. It just looked like them. There was a sort of a matte finish to the screen and it wasn't fully displaying the clarity and the depth of colors or contrast, I should say, that was needed. That is not the case. I have had some blasting sunny days down here and the screen is really, really visible. It's a win for me. So the screen is the third update, quote unquote, that I'm getting behind. But this device is not perfect. And like I said in the beginning, this is not a sponsored video. I couldn't give a shit if you go out and buy it or not. There are potentially three deal breakers I still think out there for you to not get this device if you have a really good bike computer at the moment. The first is the battery life, okay? So that hasn't changed. For me, a four hour bike ride running all the blasting the Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi's, the Ant Pluses, the GPS, the screen on about 75, 80%, I will be down at 50% after the ride. Four hour ride, 50%. So you are not getting two rides out of this, okay? Potential deal breaker, it just means you have to charge this device after every use. Second deal breaker is the mount. I hate the mount, the mount is stupid. Just change the mount, Carew. I know you've kind of, this is your thing, but just give up on it. You don't need it. It's just, I use the proprietary, the, their proper mount on the gravel bike. It's like clips in and then it's like sits sideways and it's, I just, no, it's just stupid. I don't understand why they have it. Everyone has millions of Garmin and Wahoo compatible device mounts. Just go back into that. And the last steel breaker, this is potentially a little bit boutique, but the lap button is in a really annoying place. The bottom left, you find yourself sort of, do you use your left hand to press this and then you've got to kind of press it. And here's the thing, if you press the button really hard, what it does is it clips the actual device out of its setting because it's an anti-clockwise mount system. So if you press it really hard, it actually undoes the bike computer from the mount. So I would prefer that remapped to one, to it, potentially even the other side, so you can get a good press on it and not be threatening to actually pop the device off. So for me, that third deal breaker is just the annoying lap button location. Even if they could just remap it, guys, it's, you know, an Android device, just remap it. So there you have it, guys, my third attempt at reviewing this. Look, I stand by the two other attempts that I've done to talk about this device, and I'll link them below, especially that first one, because what I was trying to say in that first video is that this is a device that's approaching the bike computer from a completely different route. You know, this is not ideally being connected to your smartphone. This is your smartphone. Okay, so it's a little bit like when I'm reviewing the Apple Watch as the bike computer. It's this idea of trying to take the bike computer out of the just generic bike computer space and putting it more up in the technology sphere that it should be in, like, and giving it a feature rich environment that we're used to with smartphones. And I think we are very much getting there with this device. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is, I don't know, we can call it this Tech Tuesdays. I don't even know what day I'm doing this anymore. But uh, yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed that. Make sure to like this video. Liking these video guys makes a massive difference. If you want to see some more tech stuff, let me know. As you know, I love doing tech and fashion. Alrighty guys, peace. See you real soon.